In the previous two modules, we reviewed the fundamental concepts from finite dimensional vector spaces and then various properties of matrices one would normally come across in the analysis of data assimilation algorithms. In this lecture, we are going to be also providing a broad overview of the fundamental tools that we need from multivariate calculus. The reason for including this is as follows. Almost all the students who take a BS degree in basic sciences or engineering in any part of the world, they have done calculus 1, 2, 3, 4, an equivalent of calculus 1, 2, 3, 4. They have been introduced to univariate calculus, differentiation, integration, differential equations, all in one variable. But when you formulate a problem in a data simulation framework, the problems have to be formulated using multivariate analysis. The state of a system is defined by a vector x. The dynamics of a system could be linear or nonlinear. For a linear system, the matrix defines the state of uh, state transition. So, we need to be very familiar with the multivariate analysis. The tools for multivariate analysis include understanding of finite, finite dimensional vector space, a thorough understanding of matrices and properties, and also a good facility with dealing with multivariate calculus which is an extension of the ordinary univariate calculus that anybody who does a BS degree uh, uh, should be familiar with. So, our goal is to be able to provide you a broad based introduction to fundamental concepts from multivariate analysis. So, let us start with from fundamentals. We are going to start with the notion of functions. To be able to define a function, we need different objects. One is a set A, another is a set B. A is a, a f is a function from set A to set B. We call A the domain of the function. We call a B the range of the function. This is called the domain of the function. This is called the range of the function. So, I need a domain, I need a range, then I need a function. What is function? A function is simply an association of points of the domain with the points in the range. By definition, f has to be defined for every member of the domain. The value of f in the range need, need not take all the values in b, that is where the, the uh, uh, distinction between various functions come in uh, come to be. So, by definition f is defined for all members of the domain that means you cannot leave anybody here. By definition a function is also called single valued. What do you mean by single valued? If you think of function as a black box if you give an input it gives an output f of x for every x there is a unique f of x there is a single value. What is the difference between a single valued function and a multi valued function? This is a single valued function. What is a multi valued function? This is the multi valued function. If I took x so this is x this is x here for x there are 3 values. This is a single valued function. So, while in principle one can have single valued functions and multi valued function in mathematics we exclude multi valued functions from consideration. So, if when a mathematician says let f be a function he already has at the back of his mind a domain a range a range is also called codomain and an association between points in the domain of the codomain by single valued means it is unique. So, that is the broadest possible way one can define functions. Now, there are special classes of functions such as special class of matrices. 
So, f is a function is called 1 to 1 I is called injective what does it mean if x is not equal to y f of x is not equal to f of y that means distinct points are mapped into distinct points in the range. That means uh, 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 y is equal to x square. So, distinct values of x have distinct values of y. So, that is what is called injective. F is called onto or surjective means F is uh, maps all the points of A onto a complete set B. F is called one to one and onto it is also called bijective it is both injective and bijective. So, let us give some examples of functions f of x is absolute value of x x square sin x e to the x sin x e to the x these are all examples of functions and these are different classifications of functions. We will more often be interested in one to one functions which are both injective and subjective because it is for these functions we can have inverses. So, if f is a function from here f inverse is a function from here to there that is that is the inverse function in order that the inverse is defined we need to be able to have further constraints the constraint is f must be 1 to 1 or injective. These are all facts essentially come from basic definitions of functions. So, now I am going to talk about other classifications of functions. f is a scalar valued function of a scalar. So, what does it mean? Here is a, bl a black box sorry let me let me here is a black box f this is x this is f of x x is a scalar f of x is a scalar that is what is called scalar valued function. That means the domain is real the codomain is real. So, what are the examples of functions which are scalar valued function? x is equal to lo x log x 2 to the power of x e to the x these are all scalar valued function of a scalar the input is a scalar output is a scalar. So, you can think of f as a transformation as a black box something goes in something gets out. f is a scalar valued function of a vector. So, in this case what happens f x belongs to r of n but f of x comes in f of x belongs to r it converts a vector into a scalar. So, that is what is called scalar valued function of a vector. Such a thing is also called functional we have already seen the notion of a functional when we talked about vector spaces. So, what are examples of scalar valued function given a vector x the norm of x a norm is a number is associated with every vector that is a number. So, a norm is a function is a scalar valued function quadratic form of x is a scalar valued function inner product of x with a for a fixed a that is a scalar valued function. So, these are all examples of scalar valued function of a vector the input is a vector the output is a number. But in dynamical systems theory as well as in data simulation we are going to be interested in a third class of function which are called vector valued function of a vector. So, what does this mean here I have a box f x gets in f of x gets out x is a vector f of f of x is also a vector this is called vector valued function of a vector. In general f is also called a map map is a very technical term used in dynamical systems theory let f be a map what does it mean f is a scalar valued function of a vector input is a vector output is a vector. So, let us uh, ok in general these two n uh, did not be the same it could be a n vector this could be a m vector I want you to see the difference the input of the vector output of the vector then the vectors could be of same size or of different size. So, let us what an example ok give an example let n be 3 that means input vectors are size 3 let m be 2 output vectors are size 2 so, x is equal to x 1 x 2 x 3. So, f of x is f 1 of x f 2 of x. So, what is f 1 of x x 1 square plus x 2 square plus x 3 square what is f 2 of x x 1 x 2 x 3. So, you give x 1 x 2 x 3 you get this vector given by this. So, that is what is called 
a map or a vector valued function. C a b denotes the set of all continuous functions defined over the interval that is an, that's an huge set it is an infinite set. C k of a b is the set of all continuous functions with derivatives of order up to k. If I say C a b continuous continuous function need not be differentiable, but in the second set C k a b it not only be differentiable, but also I would like you to be differentiable up to the order k. So, what does this mean? I have C, I have C1, I have C2, I have C k. Continuous function is a larger set, differentiable continuous and differential fun function be smaller, functions which are twice differentiable smaller. So, you can think of a relation these are supersets. C 1 is a subset of C, C 2 is a subset of C 1 which is a subset of C. I am putting greater conditions on the behavior of the function. So, functions come in various shapes and forms, functions are of various types, continuous function, differentiable functions, set of all continuous functions, set of all differentiable functions of order up to k where k is an integer. If k is infinity what we call such functions are called anal analytic functions. For example, polynomials are analytic functions they have they have derivatives of all order exponential functions are analytic functions they have derivatives of all orders and so on. With that as a background now I am going to introduce various concepts that we would need in trying to do data simulation algorithms especially optimization algorithms. We are introducing the notion of what is called a gradient of a function. So, in this particular case we are concerned with S yes, sorry we are concerned with a scalar. So, what is the starting point let f be a scalar valued function of a vector the, 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 the type 2 let z x and z be 2 vectors in R n. We say x f of x is differentiable at point f if and only if there exists a vector u such that f of x plus z minus f of x is given by u times z. See this z and this z are same. So, the definition is contingent on the existence of a vector. So, this is an inner product hot means higher order terms higher order, higher order terms in z and what is the property of the higher order term the ratio of the higher order term to the norm of z they go to 0 as z goes to 0 this is the limit. So, such a u is called the u is called the gradient of f of x with respect to x. So, this is the most general definition of a gradient. This gradient algorithmically can be computed as a set of partial derivatives of f with respect to x 1, f with respect to x 2, f with respect to x n. So, this is a n vector the derivative is denoted by the inverted delta subscripted by f f of x this is called the gradient you can call it. So, we use the term derivative for univariate gradient for the multivariate. So, even though f is a scalar valued function of a vector a, a vector its gradient is a vector in R n. So, I want you to be able to uh, see the importance of introduction of vectors and matrices very soon. So, you cannot do multivariate calculus very well until and unless you understand finite dimensional vector space as, as well as matrices very well. So, what is gradient in simple terms gradient is simply a vector of partial derivatives that is a simple form of being able to describe what a gradient is. This operator inverted del which is the gradient operator it has lots of interesting properties. Let f be a scalar valid function g be a scalar valid function the gradient of the sum is sum of the gradients. So, gradient is additive as an operator it has an additivity property. Gradient of a constant times a function is constant times the gradient of the function that is called the homogeneity property. The gradient of the product has this rule which is called the product rule which is the extension of the product rule in univariate calculus. We are used to d by dx of u v is u dv by dx. So, we already know this right d by dx of u v is equal to u dv by dx 
plus d u by d x times v that did we call this product rule. So, this is the analog of the product rule from univariate to multivariate. In the multivariate calculus we are also interested in another concept called directional derivative. So, f is given f is a scalar value function of a vector I pre specify direction z I would like to be able to compute how the function varies in this direction. So, it is called the directional derivative that is defined by f prime x comma z x is a function. So, f of x is a function f prime x comma z is the directional derivative of f of x along the direction z and that is given by the inner product of the gradient with z. By Cauchy's Schwartz inequality this inner product is equal to the norm of the gradient times norm of z times cosine theta theta is the angle between z and the gradient you, you can you can really just see that. So, Cauchy Schwartz inequality we already saw in 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 the previous lectures. So, this is essentially an application of Cauchy Schwartz inequality that tells you how the directional derivative the magnitude of the directional derivative can be obtained by computing these. Now, we are going to be talking about a slightly related concept until now we assumed x is a variable in itself, but here x is not a variable x is a function of another variable. So, x of t is a vector each component is a function. So, x n of t is a scalar valid function of t x 2 of t is a scalar valid function of a t x n of t likewise. So, I have a vector function each component is a function of t. So, if I am going to be computing the total derivative of x with respect to the time t d f by d t is is d f by d x 1 times d x 1 by d t. So, what is that I am now talking about? I have talking about f of x of t. So, if I am interested in so f so I would like to talk about couple of things now f of t of x of t a eh, these are all different functions f of x. So, let us talk about all these functions f of x x is a simple variable f of x of t f is a function of x x is a function of t. So, it is a function of a function f depends on t in this case only implicitly. In the third case f depends on t both explicitly and implicitly. So, this is no dependence implicit dependence implicit and explicit dependence. In these cases we should be able to carry out the computation of the derivative of f with respect to t. So, derivative of f with respect to t is, is the total derivative derivative of f with respect to x 1 x 1 times uh, derivative of x 1 with respect to t so on and so forth. So, this is called the total derivative of f with respect to t by chain rule. So, chain rule additive rule homogeneity rule product rule that we have learnt in basic calculus all carry over there is nothing new, but the old concept take a new form when you go from univariate to multivariate that is the idea. Next is the notion of what is called second derivative. If f is a function of a scalar second derivative we simply say we, the second derivative is, is, is simply given by. So, f d f by d x d square f by d x square we are done, but when f is a function um, a scalar valued function of a vector like this x is not 1 that are n variables x 1 to x n. So, I can gradient is a vector I can consider the second derivative matrix the second derivative matrix look at this now the first row of this matrix second partial second partial of f with respect to x 1 second mixed partial of x 1 x 2 second mixed partial of x 1 with x n likewise each row such a matrix is well defined this matrix is a special name is called the hessian of f. So, you, you can see matrices arise very naturally not only that we know 
from basic calculus the mixed derivatives are essentially the same that means del f by del x del y is I am sorry del square x by del x. So, del y del x the mixed partial derivatives if the partial derivatives are continuous the mixed partial derivatives are same the order in which you compute the partial derivative is the material. So, given that this matrix is a symmetric matrix. So, n by n symmetric matrices naturally arise when you consider the second derivative matrix which are called Hessian matrix of functions of scalar variables. So, Hessian is naturally symmetric. So, symmetric matrix. So, where do symmetric matrices come from? Symmetric matrices come from various directions. One of the simple ways in which symmetric matrices arise is by computing the second partial derivative matrix of a scalar valued function of a vector and this matrix is singular because the mixed partial derivatives are the same and that is what I told you a minute ago. So, this is called the representation of second derivative matrix for a function which is a scalar valued function of a vector. Now, we are going to vector valued function of a vector we are going to move to the next level we are. So, let f be a function from R n to R m look at this now I would like to be able to keep this picture at the back of the mind what goes in is x what comes out f of x x belongs to R n f of x belongs to R m. So, f of x is f 1 of x, f 2 of x, f m of x, x is x 1, x 2, x n. So, there are m functions each of which is a function of n variables. I hope that is clear. Now, what is that I can do now? I can take f 1 and compute the partial derivative of f 1. I can take f 2, I can compute the partial derivative of f 2. I can compute f m, I can compute the partial derivative of f m. Now, this partial derivative when written as a column is called the gradient. So, what is this? This is the transpose of the gradient. So, this is essentially transpose of the gradient of f of 1. This is simply transpose of the gradient of f of n. So, what is that we do now? We take component by component, we compute the gradient which is a column vector, you transpose it to a row vector, you stack these rows there is one row for each component of f there are m such component. So, there are m rows there are n variables. So, this matrix is a m by n matrix there are m rows there are n columns. Therefore, if you have a, a, a vector valued function of a vector from R n to R m this is the collective first derivative matrix for the entire function the collective first derivative matrix is is in general a rectangular matrix this matrix is given a special name it is called Jacobian. So, Jacobian of f Jacobian of f is defined only for vector valued function of a vector Hessian of a scalar valued function of a vector gradient scalar valued function of a vector. So, these are all the various quantities associated with functions in terms of their derivatives. Now, I am going to give some examples. Let a be a vector, let x be a vector, a be a constant vector. So, I can define a function. So, look at this now. I pick I pick a I I pick a in R n I keep it fixed. So, I am going to define f of x equal to a x which is equal to a transpose x which is equal to summation a i x i i is equal to 1 to n. So, it is a function of x it is a scalar valued function of x because it is an inner product the also the output is a scalar input is a vector a is a common vector that transforms every input vector. So, so, what is this? This is simply a linear function because the right hand side is linear in each component of that. 
So, what is the gradient of f of x? Partial of f1, partial of f2, partial of xn, and partial of x1 is a1, partial of f2 is a2, partial of xn is an. So, that is equal to a. So, we have enunciated the first rule of multivariate calculus. What is that? If f of x is equal to a transpose x, the gradient of f is a. This is very similar to what the univariate calculus person does d by dx of e to the x is e to the x d by dx of sin x is cosine x. We develop a table of differential coefficient of various standard functions. So, in data simulation we need to have such table this is the first entry in the table. So, if f of x is a transpose x the gradient of f is a. Now, let us compute the gradient of x transpose a that is a quadratic function. A is a, yesterday we talked about with respect to quadratic function we need to consider only symmetric matrices. So, let A be a symmetric matrix f of x is x transpose A x. So, f of x is A x 1 square plus B x 1 x 2 plus C x 2 square. Let me compute the gradient of this f of x partial of f with respect to x 1 partial of f with respect to x 2. A simple calculation shows is that this vector you can rearrange it at 2 times this matrix times this that is 2 A x. Therefore, we got the second entry into our table if f of x is equal to x transpose A x its gradient is 2 A x. When f of x is equal to 1 half of x transpose A x minus b transpose x the gradient is A x minus b by combining 2 1 and 2. Anybody who has done 3D war should immediately recognize that these terms very naturally occur in 3D war. So, when you read 3D war without recognizing that these are all tools from multivariate calculus you will have more trouble. Now, if you know this 3D war will become a simple exercise and that is the reason why I believe that it is necessary to understand many of these basic concepts before you start uh, 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 data simulation algorithms. My examples continue. Now, I am going to I am getting a little bit more sophisticated x is a vector h of x is another vector. So, h is a function. So, in this case h is a function from R n to R m. So, h is a m vector h has m components h 1 h 2 h m each of the components are functions of n variables x is n variable x 1 to x n. So, let us let us fix a a, a vector. So, let us find define a function f of x is equal to a transpose hx or hx transpose a. a. This is simply an analog a very simple analog of what we did in the previous case a transpose x here a transpose h of x. h of x is a any general nonlinear function. So, what is gradient of this f? This gradient of f can be this gradient of f is given by the transpose of the hessian of h times a. You remember already we have talked about a hessian. So, this is how you are going to be able to compute the, the, the gradient of this. Again I am not in my class I will derive these things in this lecture we may not have time to derive all these things, but it is very necessary that each of you work these examples have that aha in your mind to be able to handle some of these things uh, to develop that independence and dexterity in trying to make these calculations and manipulations. Now, let us extend it even further I am going to take the same h now I am considering h transpose a h look at this now this h here we consider x transpose a x here we are considering h x transpose a h x. This is again very often come across you come across in in 3D war especially with respect to the nonlinear observation operator. So, h is generally used as a nonlinear observation operator I am using the same kind of notations in here. So, in this case what is the formula for the gradient of, um, of, of, of h the, the formula for a gradient of h uh, I am sorry gradient of f f is given by this is 2 times the Jacobian the transpose of the Jacobian of x times a x. If you 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 it is very imperative to me to me these are all the nuts and bolts. 
yesterday someone was observing um, uh, after the class uh, who are the people who develop algorithms for data simulation those who understand and have good mathematical skills are the one who are going to be able to invent newer algorithms. So, there are two ways one is to use somebody else's algorithm another is to be able to invent your own algorithms to be able to invent your own algorithms you have to develop all kinds of mathematical skills and that is one of the underlying purposes of doing um, um, this preview of, of very many different tools. Now, consider the next case hfx is the composite function function of a function h of x is g of f of x and this we denote as so x you apply f first and then g first in terms of picture there is rm there is rn there is rd f takes you from rn to R, rm to rn g takes you from rn to rd h of x is in fact a bridge goes from R m to R d. So, h of s must be related to f and g in this way. So, this tells you the relation between h and f and g. So, what is the Jacobian of h? The Jacobian of h is simply product of this Jacobian of g at x and Jacobian of f at f, f at x. So, this is a this is a kind of a chain rule for Jacobians. This is again a fundamental fundamental result. these all are important things that we will apply when we talk about algorithms. The next topic in multivariate calculus is the notion of a Taylor series expansion. Taylor series expansion for a scalar valid function of a scalar, scalar valid function of a vector, vector valid function of a vector. Again there are t 3 layers of Taylor series which are important. So, let x and z be real numbers f of x plus z is f of x. So, what is the basic idea? The basic idea is as follows if I have a domain if I have a point x if I know f of x the derivatives of x all at the point x if I am given a point very close by x plus z this is x this is x plus z z is small how can I infer the value of the function at x plus z given the value of the function and its derivative at the point x that is a question Taylor answered. So, the value of the function at a neighborhood point is given by the value of the function at the point plus derivative times z. So, you can think of z as a perturbation. So, the first derivative times the perturbation, second derivative times the square of the perturbation, kth derivative times the kth power of the perturbation. So, this is a Taylor series in a small neighborhood under super uh, appropriate conditions, this series will converge this is one of the fundamental theorems in 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 multivariate uh, in in calculus this is an infinite series by truncating this infinite series at the kth degree term this is not n kth degree term in z we can get the kth order approximation this is kth order approximation so normally we don't use k more than 1 and 2 we talk about first order approximation and second order approximation so, that is the general rule with respect to approximations. In analysis either you compute exactly there are not too many things we can compute exactly in life approximation is the order of the day. So, Taylor series based approximation is often a very useful approximation computationally. So, this Taylor series is, is absolutely plays a absolutely fundamental role in computation. Now, we are going to consider the next class of functions. The next class of functions are functions which are scalar valid. The input is a vector, output is a scalar. In this case, x is a vector, z is a vector. Again, the, the z is a vector, which is, which, is, which is Rn. So, here again, I have x, I have z, I, I, I have a point here, the distance this is z. So, this is x plus z sorry this is x plus z again if I know the value of the function at x and its gradient and its hessian hessian is second derivative I can approximate the value of the function at x plus z by this relation. So, this is called the second order approximation second order approximation. 
we also know the gradient and the hessian are related uh, i'm sorry gradient to the jacobian related by the transpose of each other so i can rewrite this using re replacing the transpose by the by the jacobian so it is this form we will use in our analysis so this is the second order taylor series of of, of a scalar valid function of a vector. Now, I am going to extend it further the second order Taylor series for vector valid function of a vector you can see there are so many intricacies in here. So, what is this f so what is f of x f of x is stack you stack f 1 f 2 and f of m each component is independent. So, if I am going to be concerned with the second order expansion for f of x what is that we do you can you compute the second order expansion for f of 1 f of 2 f of m stack them together that is it very simple. So, once you know how to compute the second order expansion for a scalar valued function of a vector you have conquered the Taylor series expansion for the vector valued function of vector because a vector valued function is simply a collection of m independent functions whatever you do for one does not affect the other you do everything same for everybody. So, I expand everybody in second order term stack them all together collect the term you got that. So, that is the basic idea. So, with that in mind the second order Taylor series expansion for this is given by this that is a Jacobian term this is the second order term. This second order term is little bit more complex look at this now it is a vector. So, look at this now f is a vector. So, this is the vector this is the matrix times the vector this is another vector one half of a vector and how this vector is 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 designed this vector is given by this look at this now I have f 1 I have a hessian of f 1 this is the quadratic form of the hessian of f 1 this is the quadratic form of the hessian of f 2 this is the quadratic form of the hessian of f m stack them all together. So, you get the Taylor series expansion simply by concatenating are putting together the Taylor series expansion for each of the component please remember these are all hessian. Also please remember this is quadratic form so you can see quadratic form occurs in many many different ways one of the natural ways of dealing with quadratic forms is second order Taylor series expansion of scalar valid functions vector valid functions and so on. So, that is where uh, these things come into play. It is unfortunate that once you finish BS we take our special disciplines and masters electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, um, uh, meteorology, oceanography and other things. When we take oceanography or meteorology for example, they run you through lots of dynamics and so on which are very necessary. So, many, many of the meteorology courses are very strong on models some of the meteorology program very strong on collection of data, but there are not many there are not programs at all where much emphasis is given data simulation models are necessary data are necessary, but data simulation is something beyond in my view data simulation is an engineering discipline sitting inside the signs of prediction. So, this aim of this course is to be able to bring out the mathematical underpinnings of this engineering discipline called data simulation. Why do I call engineering discipline? Engineering always concentrates on developing a product. What is the product? Forecast. The development of forecast product in my view is um, a branch of engineering the, pr the, the product for public, public consumption and I would like to be able to create a good quality product by doing a good quality engineering which is called data simulation. The next concept is the notion of variation 3 d var the var refers to variation 4 d var refers to variation. So, the notion of variational calculus first variation second variation is fundamental to the development of many of the underlying algorithms. I would like to highlight some of the fundamental properties of this notion of first and second variation within the context of multivariate calculus. So, let x be a vector let delta x be another small vec vector with small components we call this a perturbation vector or a small increment. So, x 
x plus delta. So, f of x f of x plus delta x. When x changes value of f also changes. So, change in x induces a change in f the change in f is called delta f. So, what is delta f? Delta f is the resulting change in the value of f of x induced by the increment in x the increment is delta x. So, what is that you can think of now there is a black box that is f if you give x it gives you f of x if you give if, if you give x plus delta x it is going to give you f of x plus delta x but f of delta x I would like to be able to express it in terms of f of x itself I would like to be able to compute approximately what f of x and that is where the notion of computing the, 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 the induced variation. So, what is delta f? Delta f is the difference between the new value and the old value the induced perturbation. So, input perturbation induced perturbation delta f is called the induced perturbation this is the input perturbation. So, if f is a smooth function smooth function means what it is differentiable up to order 2 that is c 2 you remember the notion of c 2 c k functions. So, to be able to do Taylor series expansion your function should not only be continuous, but also be differential at least once differentiable. If a function is k differentiable I can consider the kth order uh, uh, Taylor series expansion. So, I am assuming a bare minimum a function is in C 2 if a function is in C 2 then I can compute the increment delta f to a second order accuracy. So, f of x plus delta x that is the actual value of the function at the new point is approximately equal to the function value of the old point plus increment one correction this is second correction this is called the first order correction this is called the second order correction. This first order correction is denoted by delta f the second order correction is denoted by delta within bracket 2 f f. So, this is called the first variation this is called the second variation likewise I can consider the kth variation the larger the order of variation I can add more accurate the value becomes if you chop off at any level it is only an approximation that is why approximation symbols are, 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 are important in here. What is delta f? Delta f is simply the inner product of the gradient with delta x. What is second derivative? It is a quadratic form delta x transpose this looks like x transpose a x what is this? This is the Hessian please remember this is the Hessian this is the x transpose a x. So, that is called the second variation term. So, I am I have given you the definition of first variation second variation. The first variation is linear in delta x second variation is quadratic in delta x. Therefore, when you are talking about vari variational methods 3 d war 4 d war we are interested in computing the increment suffered by the output resulting from increments in the input and that is where the notion of first variation second variation comes into being and these are essentially the so, so the variational calculus within this setup is derived out of the fundamental concepts that underlie Taylor series expansion here we are concerned with second up to second order in principle I can also go up to kth order. So, given this now I am going to give you formulas for computing the first variation much like I gave you formulas for computing the derivatives. So, this these are the tables of variational calculus just like tables of multivariate calculus tables of univariate calculus. So, what are the differential coefficient of standard functions what are the differential coefficient of standard function multivariate calculus what are all the first variation formulas for are, 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 are various cases and that is what I am trying to. So, these, these again help you to develop that skill to compute all these quantities which are fundamental to applications. So, let f of x be look at this now x is an r n sorry that is uh, uh, that is correct x is an r n f is a vector of size m. So, f is m vector n uh, I am sorry f is m vector x is n vector. 
I am now going to be concerned with the first variation of delta f. So, the first variation of f is simply the first variation of f 1 f 2 f m f 1 f 2 f m are all independent you compute the first variation f 1 compute the first variation of f 2 stack them all together you get a fun uh, you get the first variation of that. First variation f 1 is simply the inner product of gradient of f 1 with respect to delta x gradient of f 2 with uh, gradient of f 1 with respect to delta. So, you get the formula and this delta x is a common factor and the resulting one is a matrix it can be very easily verified this is the Jacobian times this. So, the first variation of a function is related to the matrix vector product the matrix being the Jacobian the vector being the increment. So, this is a beautiful formula that we will use repeatedly in the derivations of 3D war 4D war uh, that is the reason why they are called variational methods. Here are some examples again if f of x look at this now I am using the same example through to compute the gradient to compute the hessian to compute the first variation to compute the second variation. The reason I am keeping the same example is because then you can see the interrelations between the gradient and the variations I think it is it is the ability to knit together a picture how these relations are are built is fundamental to a thorough understanding of what 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 we are planning to achieve in this course. So, if f of x is a scalar valid function of a vector. So, the first variation is simply the inner product of the first variation of a with respect to delta x again this is the first formula in variational calculus. If f of x is equal to 1 half of x transpose a x delta f is equal to the inner product of a x with delta x here a is symmetric obviously a is symmetric because of quadratic form. Now, the third example should be very familiar to all those who have done 3D war. Z is the observation, H of x is the model prediction, Z minus H of x is the error. So, this is the sum of the squared errors. This is the function that we are often using in least square methods to minimize. So, given Z, given H, we would like to minimize this with respect to x. So, this function is the cost function of the linear least square problem. So, in order to be able to compute the solution for the linear least square problem I need to be able to compute the first variation I need to be able to compute the gradient I am I am I am I am giving the formula for the first variation of f is given by the inner product of this vector with that. Again um, um, these are simple exercises but these are an obvious I I did not go into the derivation of each of these things I am trying to hit on various important themes and 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 you have to fill in the blanks for a thorough understanding of all these things. The aim of a course like this is not to provide all the details we will we will not be able to accomplish much if that were the case. The aim is to be able to tell all the important concepts to see how things are knitted. Once you understand uh, once you have a developed a bigger picture then you can dig deeply into each of these. So, I would like you to be able to develop that digging deeply uh, as you go through the modules. With this we come to the end of this um, uh, uh, part I have given several exercise problems these are exercises are essentially extensions of the concepts we were we had talked about. You look at this as, as an example the first problem essentially asks you to compute the first order Taylor series and second order Taylor series not for any arbitrary h, but for a special h when the forms of h are given in a specific way. So, this will these are concrete examples if you did it you will have that final aha again compute the first variations again verify the different formulas that we have already talked about. So, doing this in in in, in long hand in pencil paper would 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 help to complete the picture in here. Um, what is the standard reference for multivariate calculus? My favorite is an is a slightly older book, but it is still a classic in my mind Apostle Mathematical Analysis. I have a copy of it whenever I get into difficulty which I do very often I fall back on Apostle. Apostle is a beautiful written book on uh, multivariate calculus 
with that we will conclude this discussion and overview of concepts and 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 and, and properties that are often used in uh, from multivariate calculus in data simulation thank you